Hello, I'm Mami Tantouche, and welcome to the Grasshopper tutorial session. I'm one of your um, uh, digital design tutors at MMU. Um, today will be an introduction to uh, Grasshopper 3D. So, what is Grasshopper 3D? The interface, how does it work? What can you achieve with Grasshopper 3D? Uh, why use it? And we'll end with a quick uh, Grasshopper tutorial. So, what is Grasshopper 3D? Grasshopper 3D is a visual programming language and environment that runs with Rhinoceros 3D. So, it comes with Rhino 3D and it's a way for you to manage um, and manipulate geometry um, in a systematic way and uh, through a visually uh, programmable, uh, programmable interface. So, um, there's an interface right there on the right and you can see um, the interface is made out of um, nodes, mm. You can see them as boxes and then lines uh, that connect uh, boxes together. And that's for information transfer. So you start off with the geometry that affects the other geometry and so on. Um, and it's used primarily for you know parametric modeling, structural design, etc., and prefabrication as well. So how does it work? Um, you can see here in the background we have the Rhino interface, and in the foreground we have the Grasshopper interface and you, you, um, you uh, input some data and geometry into the Grasshopper interface and then um, Rhino and Grasshopper will um, generate the geometry uh, based on your script that you designed in the Grasshopper interface onto the Rhino interface. So these are the Grasshopper nodes as I showed you earlier. So each node does a function or is an instruction um, you have inputs, this can be one input, multiple inputs. Um, something will be applied to the input, an instruction or a function, and then you get an output, and so on. So we can see on the bottom there we have a multiplication node, and what this multiplication node does is multiply A and B together. So if A is 5 and B is 5, the instruction is multiplication, and then we have the output, which is 25. And these nodes, based on their color, can give you certain indication. So whether something's going okay, there's an error, or something's uh, wrong. So the orange will indicate a warning. So such as missing data, or wrong data being, uh, or um, missing flows. The red um, color will indicate an error. So something is wrong. So in this instance, we're trying to multiply five by a curve, and we cannot do that. So we get a null and we get an error. And the correct status, if it stays grey, yeah, everything's done correctly. You've inputted the right data in the right um, data structure, and the function has executed and given you a result. Um, so the way Grasshopper works is you connect these series of information and geometry together um, with certain parameters that you can add, and um, it will generate um, the output, as you can see here. Um, this is one of the outputs from the script below. In your free time, you can try to um, mimic the script below. So I have it here. I'll also upload um, this with a sporting document so you can try it in your free time. And as you can see here, we've created a surface uh, with an undulating um, and gradual change of, a, of uh, a diamond pattern, as you can see there. This example requires um, a plugin which is called Weaverbird. So if you want to have a go at this, please install it. So what can you use Grasshopper for? Grasshopper can be used for many things, really. Um, you can use it to uh, create complicated diagrams. So if you have data that is um, complicated and you want to visualize the data in a certain way, rather than spending a lot of time on Illustrator, if you develop a system and script that system Grasshopper, you can um, output diagrams such as this one over here and mainly for geometry uh, dealing with geometry so for structural solutions um, for um, anything to do with optimization anything to do with um, environmental analysis anything to do with the uh, computerization or computation um, Grasshopper is good at it's also good at geographic information systems if you have um, geolocated data and you want to visualize or analyze it um, so that's the end of the presentation. Um, now, uh, please uh, open Rhino so we can uh, begin with uh, Grasshopper. 
as you can see here, um, we've opened Rhino. So Rhino 6 comes with uh, Grasshopper already installed. So the icon should come up on the top of your toolbar just over here. Alternatively, you can type in Grasshopper into the command bar and then launch it from there. Um, for Rhino 5, you will have to install Grasshopper separately. Um, so please uh, look up how to do that. It's relatively straightforward. Um, and then we can see that the, lot, the Grasshopper um, is launching at the moment. Um, so what we get is this canvas. We'll close this uh, um, panel for now. Um, what you can see here is a canvas. You can zoom out and see it's a theoretically infinite canvas where you can drag certain nodes in. Um, you have your uh, tabs at the bottom and these um, give you the different functions and different nodes that you can use. Um, you can also install additional plugins which I'll be covering in an additional um, Grasshopper tutorial later on. Um, so params, math, sets, vectors, surfaces, uh, surfaces curves, mesh, intersection, transform, uh, display, these are your um, typical Grasshopper plugins. The rest here are um, installed from external sources. So each each tab will group a certain amount of functions um, that are relatively similar. So you can see here, these are ge the geometry containers, primitives, inputs, utilities, etc. And with the maths, you get math, op math operations, sets, anything to do with data structures, and lists, uh, vectors, anything to do with uh, vectors in terms of um, three-dimensional forces, etc., and planes. Curves, cur uh, which we've already explained in Rhino tutorial, uh, lines and um, curved lines of different degrees. We have surfaces, we have mesh as well, uh, intersection, and transforming um, certain uh, transforming um, geometry, display, etc. So each of these groups, you can click on the drop down menu and then you'll have the um, full amount of nodes appearing. You can open Grasshopper files from here, save them from here, zoom in or zoom out from here, and you can create quick sketches over there if you need to annotate certain objects. So this is a Rhino um, um, canvas. And what you simply do here is drag and drop. So we'll begin with the um, geometry containers here to illustrate. So typical geometries will include points, curves, BREP, surfaces. Vector. These these are the ones you'll be working with the most. Um, the others um, are also relevant, but usually these five will be um, will contain uh, or will be utilized for most of your programming. So the point container is very simple. What it does it contains a point. So if we go in Rhino and we draw a point, we can go we can select that point in Rhino, right click on Grasshopper, set one point. You can choose the point, and now we have this point in Grasshopper referenced over here. So now we can apply some certain functions to that point in Grasshopper. Same applies for curve. So if you select a curve, we can set one curve. As you, as you can see here, once we select the curve, the curve gets highlighted in green. At the moment, um, the reference is directly from Rhino, so if we delete this, curve, you can see here, a reference curve cannot be found because we've deleted the curve from Rhino. So if you can control Z in Rhino, we can see that the curve has come back. Same applies with the BREP. BREP uh, stands for boundary representation and BREP is good for storing volumes such as this one here. So you can see here, you can see we've, um, we've stored this box in this container. Surfaces, as the name suggests, save surfaces over here. So I'll select one surface, as you can see here. We can see that if we click on this, green highlights means 
this surface is referenced into Grasshopper. A component that you usually use is called panel. So if you type in panel over here, you can get a panel up. You can also find it in the inputs over here. And what this will do is if you connect it over here, you can get a reading and saying it's referencing one surface. You can reference more than one surface in a node. So if I create another surface, select both of them, right click, set multiple surfaces. As you can see here, if I click on the node, these two turn green, indicating that this um, node references these two surfaces. And you can see we have a list of two surfaces over here. A vector, um, if you right click, select one vector, and then you can choose any vector direction you wish. A vector is a three dimensional um, object that indicates a direction and a magnitude. What vectors are useful for are for moving geometries or manipulating geometries, i.e. scaling them, etc. in different ways. Vectors in themselves don't have a position in space, but they're rather um, useful for um, applying to geometries. So now we'll get into how certain geometries are created and manipul manipulated in Grasshopper. So um, all the geometries fundamentally are represented with numbers. So a point in three-dimensional space will be represented by an x, y, and z uh, direction. So if you go on the vector tab and on the construct point over here, or type construct point from the canvas, you can see that this comes up. And what this is asking is for a x coordinate, y coordinate, and a z coordinate. Now, by double clicking on the canvas again and typing in the number 100, you'll get a number slider which you can change from 0 to 100. We can input the slider into the X. Control C and V to copy again. And now, as you can see, we have a point that we created from three numbers, three different coordinates. And you can change this point in whichever direction you want. To change the range of the slider, simply double click, choose the rounding you want, real number, etc., or a floating number, the amount of digits, minimum and maximum. I can change this to 50, for example, and press OK. Now we can see the range limit is 50 over here. Now we have one point. We can go into the container, uh, point container by clicking points. Point containers are black with an indication of the geometry over here. And we can create a new point in Rhino and reference into Grasshopper. Now we have two points referenced in Grasshopper, as you can see, over here and over here. Lines are made out of lines are the shortest distance is the shortest distance between two points. So we can generate a line from these points by simply clicking line. We can get a start point and an end point. And now, as you can see, we've generated a line from these two points. If we go into a panel component, you can see that this point has a 50, 78, 100, and this point is referenced over here. If we want to know the coordinates of this point, we can go on the deconstruct points under the vector tab. And now we can see the separate coordinates if we wish. So hopefully that will illustrate how you, Rhino works. So it works by taking information from the beginning and feeding them in um, in a forward direction through the different components and building them up. What now we can do with this is we can we can move the line. So if we type in the move command, the move command simply asks for geometry, motion, and outputs a geometry and transform. If you hover over the component, you can it gives you further um, indication of what it does. So translate, move an object along a vector. If you hover over the input, it'll also tell you the 
geom uh, the requirements it needs and also indicates the geometry. As you can see there, um, for example, the motion indicates that a vector geometry is required, while the geometry um, object indicates that a curve object is required. If we hover over the output, we can see that a line object is the output. A line and curve is simply trans uh, translated in Grasshopper, so if we simply click on this, we see that the color of the component hasn't changed, and this means that um, the um, component has executed successfully. So as you can see here, there, ha there has been a movement. Despite us not inputting anything into the motion, if you hover over the motion input, you we can see that the, typic that the um, default value inserted into uh, motion is 0, 0, 10. And this means the geometry that we input will be moved 0 in the x, 0 in the y, and 10 in the z. We can, we can change this by creating a new vector ourselves. So we can go on uh, vector x, z, y. <clears throat> now we require three coordinates to create a vector. Let's say we want to move the line 50 in the x direction, minus 50. Mm. Just copy and paste the slider, double click. Go on real numbers, go on a minimum minus 100 and plus. Okay. Now we can go into the minus over here. So minus 100 in the y direction and 100 in the z direction. You can see here now we have a output of 50 minus 100 and 100. So we've created our own vector and it also indicates the length. Now we can input this vector over here and as you can see, As you can see, the um, geometry has moved x in this direction, 50 in this direction. It has been moved backwards 100 because we've inputted a minus 100. And it's moved 100 in the z direction, which is upwards over here. You can also apply this by a point. So we can see that we moved our original point over here in the same direction. <clears throat> um, other, there's many options you can do in, in Grasshopper, really. And um, if you go on the uh, Transform um, tab, you can see these are all the different options that you can use. You can array certain geometries. You can rotate them, move them, orient them in certain planes, etc. So now we'll delete all of this actually before then, um, just to show you um, some of the errors that you might get with um, Rhino 3D. So if we input a number into a geometry, this node will turn red. And this will generate a little bubble on the top right. If you hover over the bubble, it'll tell you, uh, it'll give you an indication of what's going wrong. So it's telling us that the object contains one error data conversion failed from number to geometry. And with this, we know that it is expecting a geometry, but we've given it a number. So Control-Z will undo this. To connect the nodes, you simply just drag from the output into the input. To disable the node, you simply hold on Shift, uh, hold on, hold down Control, and drag again. As you can see here. Um, so now we'll delete all of these and we'll, we'll begin a small tutorial um, in Grasshopper. So first things first, we want to create multiple, poly, uh, multiple points in which we'll generate a curve from. As you can see here, I've populated uh, the Rhino space with six points and I will want to reference them into a point parameter over here. So select the points, right click, set multiple points. And as you can see here, once I click on the container, it's highlighted green, which indicates the points have been referenced. The next component will be a NURBS curve component. So 
If I type in nerves, you'll get it um, up. Alternatively, you can find it over here as well. In mm, over here, just over here. Yeah. So we have the points, and we have a node which will execute a certain function. These nodes, this node will require a certain uh, information. So vertices, so curve, control points, which are these. So we can see that we've connected it over here. And you can see that the node has changed from orange to gray. If you con control Z, hover over the orange uh, bubble, and we can see what the um, issue is, which is the input parameter vertices failed to collect data. If we connect it again, we can see that's turned gray, meaning that the node has successfully um, worked um, we can go over here to see that we have a new curve being generated some some of the components can run without um, fulfillment of all of their inputs so over here for example uh, we have the uh, default value which is three we can change this to two which will loosen up the curve or one which will make it into a polyline usually you won't you won't need more points than four. Periodic, if we hover over periodic, uh, we can see that the um, input data indicator is a circle, uh, which is half black, half white, and that indicates a Boolean value. If we type in Boolean, we can get container. Boolean sim simply represents a true or false value. So if you right click, set Boolean, we can set it to false or true. Periodic here means to close the curve um, from the end point to the start point. We would want to do that, so we'll indicate true and connect that. And as you can see now, we have a curve generated from these points. These points, they are referenced in Rhino, and they're referenced again in Grasshopper over here. However, the, the curve that we see here is just in Grasshopper. So you won't be able to manipulate it in Rhino at all. You can move these around as you wish and generate different curves in whichever way you want. As soon as you change any anything in Rhino, this will get updated and will feed forward into the following components. Now that we have a curve, we want to transform it into a surface. And a simple way to do that is to connect it to a surface uh, geometry container. Ge Although this is a container for surface geometry, if we, and if you hover over here, it'll ask for a surface. Grasshopper understands that if you give it a planar curve, meaning a curve um, that um, has all its points in the XY plane, i.e. no, 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 um, um, no undulations in the Z direction, you can connect it and it will create a surface for you. If we type in area, we will get the area component. And if we connect it over here, you can see that the outputs, it outputs the area in millimeters because this is the settings we have in Rhino and the centroid as well. So no matter where we move, we can all we can always see that the Rhino, um, right, uh, that the Grasshopper outputs will be updated because any any change in the Rhino interface will update the information in Grasshopper and output us new information. What we want to do now is um, move this object. Uh, we'll treat it as floor plates, and we want to do what we want to do is create more floor plates. So as we did earlier with the move command, we type in move, select move, it's asking for a geometry and motion. We want to move the surface container, we'll delete this for now. We want to move the initial surface by a certain, um, a certain number. At the moment, the motion is set to um, 10 in the Z direction. Um, what we want to do is move it 3000 in the Z direction. So 3000 will be three meters um, in, uh, in, in units. Um, 
as you can see here, if we insert this, automatically it will fail because what we insert, what, what we was asking for was a vector and we've given it just a single number. And as mentioned earlier, a vector is made out of three numbers. So what we can do is construct vector, uh, vector x, y, z, give it a z, zero, and zero. So this will give us a vector that moves objects zero in the x, zero in the y, and 3000 in the z. Or we can also use a unit z, unit z function. And what this does is creates a vector in the z direction, and we just need to give it the magnitude of the z direction. And if we have a panel output here to see the outputs, we can see 0, 0, 3000. And if we copy it here, we can see the same. So this shows you that in Grasshopper, there's many different ways of doing the same thing. And uh, with time, um, you'll develop your own approaches to solving specific problems. Um, so sometimes there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer, um, but there are um, more optimized and faster options. So we can delete this for now because we won't need it. And now what we'll do is we'll insert this into the motion. And as you can see here, we've moved our geometry 3,000 units up in the Z direction. Um, just so that our flow plates uh, reflect better, what we'll want to do is go into right now and scale scale our flow plates a bit better, just like this, so that we're dealing with something um, more manageable, just like that. As you can see there, we've just changed some of the points, and because we changed the points at the initial stage of the code, this will get propagated throughout, and then as, these, as this nodes update, it will update this, and this, and so on. So rather than moving the, um, the surface by just one vector, we can create a series of vectors to move the surface by. So I'll just keep this example here to illustrate. And we'll create a new, um, uh, a new series of vectors. So if we type in the command series, Hover over, we can see that this this node will create a series of numbers. We need to give it a start, a step, and a count. So a start will be 3,000 steps will also be 3,000. Um, so we'll create a new and count. We will keep it 10 at the stage. Now, if we get a panel and connect it to the output, you can see the output. So we've started with 3,000. As you can see, it's the first item on the list. Step is 3,000, so we will um, add 3,000 to each step. So as you can see here, it's 3,000, 6,000, 9,000. So each item in the list gets 3,000 added to it, and we have 10 steps overall. Because Grasshopper starts with zero, the ninth indexed item means that we have 10 items all together. So this is called a list in Grasshopper. Um, in the same way that control CV, we have a list of points over here. We can have a list of numbers as shown. Now, instead of having one single uh, vector, we can copy this, copy and paste this, and attach the series into the factor. Now, if we link a panel to it again, you can see that we've created 10 vectors, each of them 3000 um, greater than the other in the z direction. Now, if we connect this to the motion over here, which manipulates our initial surface, 
you can see that we've created 10 floor plates of the initial surface. So what I'll do now, we'll just clean it up slightly by deleting the extra panels and codes that we don't need. Now you can go on and change anything in the initial steps and then everything will be updated. Okay, we have an error. Data conversion failed from curve to surface. Um, we'll just delete that. Control Z. Right. So the reason for this is I've accidentally moved one of the points in the Z direction ever so slightly, which means that the curve is not planar anymore. So I'll simply go into Rhino, Control Z, 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 Z. And now I can still move it in the, oops. I can still move it in the Z direction, uh, X, Y plane here to make sure the curve is completely flat. As soon as I move it in the Z, you can see it's creating an error. So I'll Control Z and now I have this back again. Let's say I want more floor plates. I can simply go into the series over here and create 20 floor plates if I need. I can move this up and down and I can change the first floor, how far it is, since we change where we start. And I can change the distance between the floors. So by, dub by double clicking on the slider, I can manually input the um, the value I want, and let's say I would want this to be 4,000 for now. Change this 4,000 as well, just for a bit more consistency. And at the moment, I'll just deal with 14 floor plates, as you can see. You can select these items in um, Rhino. You can lock them if you don't want to move them or select them just for consistency. You can right click to unlock the objects as you can see here or you can hide them completely so you can't select them. Right click to unhide as well. The next step is uh, rotation. So to rotate a geometry you need um, uh, a point of rotation and a direction of rotation. Um, so what we'll do, what we can do here is we can create a series again of numbers by copying and pasting this just over here. We'll start off with zero. And we'll have 20 steps and because we need to rotate the same floor plates by the same amount of rotations we can connect this 14 over here rather than having separate sliders we can have everything if, if we can minimize the amount of sliders that would work better so if I go on the panel just over here and look at the outputs I can see that I have numbers ranging from 0 20 40 to 260 now to rotate to um, to rotate the objects, I need a rotate command over here. And again, as mentioned earlier, to understand what this does, we need to hover over and ask uh, for it to give us an indication. So here it's telling us to, that it rotates an object in a plane. It rotates geometry, base geometry, to a certain angle, rotation angle in radians and a plane. A plane here is a, a point and a reference of the um, direction of the surface. So angles, we've, we want to rotate the separate floor plates by these angles over here. However, this is asking for radians and what we have here is degrees. So to convert these we'll have to um, get a, um, a radians Node over here, insert these as degrees, and if I get a panel object, 
out again. I can see that I have the degrees in radians. If you're unclear what radians are, degrees are, you can Google them. Um, it's simply a different way to represent angles. Now, if we connect the radians here, we've already connected the angles that we need. Now, these are the geometry that we have. And th this is, these are the geometries that we want to um, change. Um, so just to avoid any problems, I'll just move this to zero because then we have access to all the floor plates over here. Now, what we simply do is connect the geometry over here. As you can see here, we have something interesting going on. And this is because um, Grasshopper is rotating all of these surfaces. If I go on the top view, it'll be a bit clearer. By the point of origin, which is here. This is not what we're going to do because we want to rotate each surface through its center point. So what we'll do here is have get an area component, connect, if we go on the perspective again, you can disable the view of a certain node by right clicking and clicking preview. By clicking on the node, you can see that's highlighted in green, so we know this is what we're dealing, the geometry we're dealing with at the moment. So we have this geometry, we can connect it to the area, and now we have centroids, over here and area. Area is just a number readout, centroid is geometry readout as, we, as indicated by the um, black and white icon next to the word centroid. So we can connect the centroid to the plane and this tells it to rotate each object we have here. If I get a panel out you can see that we have a list of 14 objects their centroids, so the, the centroids of the 14 objects and the degrees of the 14 objects that we want to rotate by. If I delete that, right click, preview, right click, preview, sorry, and then select the previous geometry, right click, preview off. You can see that we have each floor plate rotated by a certain degree. Now because we have all this connected to uh, sliders, we can rotate these sliders. Let's, change, let's say we want it change by 10 degrees and you can see the rotation here is more subtle. We can make this into 45 degrees and as you can see the rotation is more chaotic. We'll turn this back to 10 degrees. You can also still go back and change the number of floor plates and this will automatically update the movement geometry because they're all linked together and the degrees in which you want it to rotate by because we have it in a single slider. You can also still go back here and change the distances between the floor plates. So now, um, at the moment, we just have floor plates, but we don't have any external facades. So one useful command um, in Grasshopper is the loft command. If you go over, hover over the loft command, it'll indicate that it creates a lofted surface through a set of section curves. We can take these geometries. At the moment, we can see that we have trimmed surfaces. If we get a curve component, we can connect these and as you can see here, we have the edge highlighted in green. If we turn this preview off, you can see that we have curves over here. Now by connecting these curves over here, you can see now that we have one external fa facade. And this is done by connecting all the different surfaces together. We can still go back and move these points however we want and the whole script will automatically update. Now, if we have a certain structure um, that we want to explore, a certain facade pattern, etc., this will help us really explore the different variations very quickly without um, a lot of um, heavy editing of 2D drawings. 
So you can explore a lot more options and if you um, integrate a uh, genetic algorithm, etc., which I will demonstrate in series to come, you can explore thousands of options within spaces of minutes. Because we already have the parameters and what the computer do, it will run all these parameters three steps. So now we have the lofted surface over here. Can rotate this around and now you have a parametric tower that you can just play with. Now you can take your time to add your own personal touch to this. For example, you want to include different floor heights for different layers. You would want to include certain breaks in the tower or you can choose to scale different floor plates however you want. You know. If you just follow the um, approach that I did in terms of getting the certain geometries, um, so these ones over here, if I turn preview on, getting their center points, applying a certain manipulation for them, and then linking them to the subsequent nodes, you can create your own um, personal touch that way. I'll just turn that preview off again. As mentioned earlier, all these geometries are generated without any geometries being present in Rhino. To bake these geometries or to access these geometries in Rhino, you simply right click on the geometry that you want to export and click bake. Choose which layer to bake it onto and click OK. Now if I disable the preview in Grasshopper as you can see here, go on to Rhino, just turn into shaded can see now that we have a surface generated from Grasshopper and baked in Rhino which we can export to other software such as Revit, SketchUp, Maya if you want to do any any animations and Lumion if you want to render. You can also export other um, geometry like floor plates so if I, um, if I want to create some floor plates I can go on here extrude extrude this geometry unit Z and let's say our floor plates are 300 mil thick we can bake this also default now you can see we have floor floors in our design. So if we can go here on the clipping plane, generate a vertical clipping plane like this, you can see that now we have a thickness to the walls. You can also add a thickness to the skin. You can add certain columns, for example, going through certain points that are relevant to you, etc. Now, because this is one single surface, we can also add it we can also generate um, uh, curved or bespoke panels for each section um, and you can do this through um, plugins such as uh, Lunchbox etc. What we'll do now is I'll just delete the geometry that I baked over here and Turn this preview off and turn the grasshopper preview back on. As you can see here now we have the preview of the um, turn this one off. It's already off. The preview of the different floor plates and the preview of the external facade. What we can do now is because we have a single surface which is modeled in NURBS we have local coordinates on the surface that we can access. So what we need is a divide, surf, uh, divide surface component. Apologies, that's the wrong node. We need a divide domain. No, that's the wrong one. Divide domain, divide domain squared, this one helps us generate a two-dimensional surface. Now, because each surface has a local coordinate, 
in Rhino and Grasshopper, we can link this to the domain. And as you can see here, we have a U and V value. The U value is 0 to 254,000, which means that the U, which is similar to an X in a Cartesian space, starts from 0 and goes to, to 245,000. Similarly, in the X, we have a minus 3,000 to 0. Now, in order to divide the surface in, um, into a, a certain amount, we have to input the V count and Y count. So let's say we want to divide the surface 10 times in the U direction and 20 in the V direction. What this component will do is give us the range of those local coordinates. As you can see here, these are the different ranges, 10 multiplied by 20, which will give us 200 different segments of that single surface. What we can do now is get a surface box just over here. Now the surface box is asking for the original surface which we have created just over here, the domain which we've created over here and heights which we will give it um, a height of 300 for now. And if you zoom in you can see that we've created flat elements on this facade that has a, a, a width. And this facade is separated in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 in this direction, as indicated by our U count, and 20 in this direction, going around. What we can do now is create a a um, <clears throat> a repeatable facade pattern by creating a certain geometry and mapping it to the surface. So we can create a cylinder. As you can see here, we have the default value of x y plane. 0 0.5 and the length of 1. At the moment this cylinder is being generated because if we have a panel here we can see that it's outputting a geometry based on the default values but it's too small for us to view so what we can do is make it much more bigger by giving it a radius give it um, a bigger radius, there we are, so we can view. Now of course we have a very thin cylinder over here because we have a length of one, which is one millimeter, so we can give it a height of 100 meters as well, so we can see. Now this is one cylinder, one element that we can scale to a box and map to our tower. What we can do here now is get a bounding box component and what this does is create a box around the geometry that we give it. So we can see that we have a box that maps or that contains the cylinder from each edge. What we're going to do now is box morph which takes a box um, and reference it, references it to a different box. So box morph over here. We connect the um, geometry. So in this case, we want to manipulate this geometry, which is a cylinder. It has this bounding box with it, which is this reference, and the target box, which are these boxes that we've created in the facade. Now this might take a moment here, 
and if we disable uh, these previews and zoom in you can see that we've mapped the cylinder onto the facade by increasing this the UV uh, the U count to 20 as well we can double the amount of cylinder on the facade as you can see there Um, the grasshopper window has disappeared for some reason. Ah, there we are. <laughs> so as you can see here, and because this is only 300 um, deep, um, it seems flat at the moment, but if we go here, pick the geometry, okay. You can see that we've baked the geometry to right now. You can also go along and bake the uh, floor plates, which is this node over here. So bake. And then we can disable Grasshopper for a moment. And you can see we have a facade with floor plates. You can use this technique to um, replicate any type of component facade whether you designed it bespokely rather than certain um, rather than just a, a typical cylinder and you can make it a lot more um, detailed and smaller but for the sake of it being more optimized and for the sake of demonstration I haven't um, increased this number a lot otherwise it will crash you'll need to give it a couple of minutes for it to um, morph each single geometry to the specific box that you've uh, created for it. Hopefully that was a good intro for um, Grasshopper for you, um, understanding the fundamental of um, programming in Grasshopper, so geometry being manipulated from the beginning and being propagated throughout. Um, how to deal with nodes, it will give you certain indications if you hover over the inputs, outputs. It will indicate what kind of information it wants and what structure, whether a list, a data tree or an item it wants. How to manipulate objects with certain, um, with certain nodes. Get certain readings such as area and centroids. And divide and manage services and exploiting the benefits of NURBS modeling using local coordinate systems and creating um, parametric um, design solutions and facades. Thank you very much for listening and following through. I look forward to seeing you all uh, in the near future. If you have any problems with using Grasshopper, please feel free to drop in in our daily um, digital, digital support sessions, which uh, you can see um, at the end of this video. Bye.